it's good to be with you again. I'm going to be ministering in this message, uh, a message called uh, Wake Up and Take Your Place. You know, a lot of people in, in the body of Christ, Christian people, uh, the Bible says they are asleep spiritually, but we need to wake up and, and wake up and take our place, you know. And, and by the way, let me say this. There, there are ways to connect with us at Living Word Church and to continue to hear more of these encouraging words by hitting the subscribe button on YouTube and also like us on our Facebook and Instagram page. You can also go to livingwordchurch.faith. Go to livingwordchurch.faith and join uh, what's going on at Living Word Church. We're excited. Uh, this is a, a new year. This is uh, uh, 2024, 2024. And so there's going to be great things happening in the, in the last days. And I believe that we are in the end of the last days. And, and uh, thank you. Some of you are being so faithful to tune in. And thank you for doing that. And also uh, thank you for praying for us as you do. That uh, Paul says, pray for me that I'll be delivered from wicked spirits. And, you know, pray for me that I'll be delivered from wicked tongues in the name of Jesus, and that I'll continue to obey God. You know, uh, before I get into the message, let me read you a word of inspiration. Um, and it goes this way. You may have many disappointments, but don't you give up in your heart and in your mind. God has never promised you that life would be easy. But he said that if you trust him, he will bring you through every time. God has given you dreams. And if you allow him to help you, then they will be fulfilled. His desire is for you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, because this is his will. You have been trying to do things in your own wisdom and in your own steam. But if you return back to God and let him take charge, then he'll bring to pass your dreams. You have cried many times in the midnight hours, thinking that all hope was gone. But it is a lie because your future is bright, and God will not turn his back on you and leave you alone. Don't you dare give up on your dreams because God is with you all the way. Keep moving forward and don't look back because your best is yet to come each and every day. Push forward and pursue even when you have fallen and don't know what to do. Let God take the wheel of your life and you'll see the dreams begin to shine and come through. Don't listen to anyone who will try to convince you that you don't have what it takes and that you are a failure and cannot fulfill your dreams because you are a mistake. These statements are lies from the devil trying to knock you down and out. Rise up and say, no, I'm not a failure nor a mistake, and I know without a doubt. I believe with all my heart that God is alive and that he'll rise up big within me. I will pursue the dreams that are in me and will no longer dwell in the past because I am now free. Therefore, I know that life is full of excitement and opportunities, and I am going to fulfill my part. I know who I am now and what I can do because I have a change of mind and a change of heart. I read this to, I read this to say that this is a new year, and so let the past go. And be renewed in your heart. Have a change of heart and mind. Now, wake up and take your place. The word wake up, it means to arouse from. It means to stir up. To excite, to arouse interest in. To alert. You know, let me say this. God is not interested of how much of him you get but how much of you he get. You know, some people say, yo, God, I, I, want, I want to have more of God. Lord, I want to have more of you. Well, I understand 
maybe you want more of information, more of knowledge of him. But to have more of him, you've got all you need of him. Matter of fact, the Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The Bible says that you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because the greater is he that's in you. You're not going to get more of God. But if you give him more of you, then you'll get more of revelation, more of knowledge and understanding, wisdom and grace, everything that God has to offer. Matter of fact, the Bible says everything that pertains to life and godliness dwells on the inside of us. So knowing that, we need to wake up to the fact that the great one lives inside of us and take our place. If you associate yourself with bad people, then you will spiritually be asleep. Don't let the world take the place of God. Don't let pleasures of this world take the place of God. I'm going to make a statement. It might not be too popular to some of you that's, that are sports fans, but I'm going to say it anyway because I believe in speaking the truth, so help me, God. But I remember uh, years ago, I was listening to a clip of Old Roberts. That's been, no, Jimmy Swaggart. That's been years ago. That's when he had big um, crowds coming to his meetings. And, and he got up one, in one service and spoke and said this. The Lord told me that the God of the U.S., he said the God of the U.S. is sports. You know what? Some people, that's the God. Let me say this. What you think about the most is your God. So therefore, don't let Jesus, the Bible says, thou shalt have no other God before thee. Let God be God. Amen. Because there's nothing wrong with sports. There's nothing wrong with football, baseball. There's nothing wrong with the, the pleasures of this world. But when they take the place of God, when they take the place of God, you spend thousands of dollars to go to Super Bowl. You spend all kinds of money to go to the Super Bowl because you love the Super Bowl. You love the game. But you don't give hardly anything to your church. That tells me God's not your God. Now, I know this may provoke you, but I tell you what, I hope it provokes you to repent and turn back to your first love. Your first love should be God. Without him, there would be anything on, uh, on this earth you could do. There's nothing wrong with pleasures. You know, this pleasure business is sin if, if, if it comes between me and God. You know, uh, you got to wake up and, and, and take your place. Wake up and take your place. You know, uh, let me give you a testimony. This whole message may be talking about, but I'll get more into it my next message. But I remember several years ago when, uh, years ago, uh, before I met my wife, Charlotte. And, of course, we met on March the 30th, 1974, at 9 o'clock, Leavitt and Sheridan Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at Skate Lamb. Now, I was, uh, I was a skater. I mean, I loved to go roller skating. I was not the type of guy I was not. I never been on drugs. Uh, I, I never, I never uh, had a drink in my life. I don't drink alcohol. Uh, don't smoke cigarettes. Uh, but yet, uh, I, 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 my, my God really was, was roller skating. I just loved, loved roller skating. I went all the time. I love the disco music and the roller skating and just that was the old school, I guess. And and uh, matter of fact, I met my wife on March the 30th, 1974, skating. That's a whole thing within itself. And, and but the church I went to was not teaching the full truth, so I kind of got out of church at that time because I couldn't I, I couldn't do anything uh, if I. I mean, th those days, if you had a television, you're going to hell. I had one pastor say that that television is a one-eyed devil. Well, not necessarily. There's bad things on it, but there's good things, good gospel programs, good, good clean movies you can watch. 
But I, I, I began to feel bad. I, I went to I go roller skating. Then, then when I left the roller rink, I, I got my car, and I live about 30 miles from the skating rink. And, 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 I, and in the car while I was driving, I, was, I had tears going down my eyes. I said, Lord, I said, is this a sin? Is, is this a sin for me to go roller skating? I don't want to do something that will offend you. I, I don't do nothing that will... That would be wrong. I, I don't want to go to hell, and 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 so uh, I. Every time I would skate, I would go home feel I just feel so bad. And one time I I was living by myself in an apartment, so I was uh, uh, I, I got into my apartment and I opened the door, and and I just fell uh, across the bed, just lay back on my back and just lift up with. And look in a dark room with tears in my eyes. Says God, have I just sinned? And all at once, when I said that, uh, I saw uh, a, a light, like a banner, uh, just just lit up, just whoosh, like that. And it gave a scripture. And God took one scripture that was talking about something else and made it rhema to me. And this scripture, when I saw it, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I saw a scripture roll across the room in a banner, just lit up. Paul says, I know, and I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus Christ, that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that think of it to be unclean, it is unclean. What he is saying, simple things like roller skating. And he spoke to me. I guess the first time, really the first time I really heard God's voice, where I can actually hear it, he said, it is no sin for you to go roller skating. But if that come between you and me, then it is sin. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not is, is, is sin. And I got delivered from that. So I know that I can watch television as long as it's clean. There's, there's things you can do uh, now drinking alcohol and, and and all these things and we don't i don't preach all that stuff i mean i don't I, I don't encourage you to do that but i will say this wake up and take your place and and uh i felt i had so many nights going to home felt condemned i felt like i was um i, I was one of those guys that got saved every service because i just thought if you just one little sin would send me to hell. It's not that way, folks. No. I'm not giving you a license to sin. You already have sinned without a license. But the thing is, we got to wake up and take a place. And we can't, that's, that tells me, we cannot live a life for God without the Word of God in our lives. Let me say it further. We cannot live a, a good life for God without having a revelation of His Word that reveals to us that we have been forgiven. Amen. I was in a church one time, and I guess this is a prelude of what I'm preaching, so I'm not really getting into the whole message yet, but I'm just kind of flowing what's in my heart. The church I went to was a very denominational church, a very religious, and, and there's nothing wrong with non-denominational church, any church, as long as they preach the word. But in that particular church, I was just wasn't, uh, I wasn't being fed what I need to feed to grow. I just didn't know much of the word of God. And we had a guest speaker in that church that night, and he's up here preaching. And I was a type of guy, I was a quiet, I sat in church, and I was just quiet, and I didn't shout like other people did i was just more reserved um of course i'm not reserved now i don't believe in, i believe in shouting and praising god but i just didn't feel feel god's presence you know i, I don't know i just was fighting i was wondering if i was saved or not i just I always i lived that way i'm i'm saved or not saved and and at the end of the and i noticed that guest speaker i i, I can tell he was kind of eyeballing me during his messages because i wasn't responding i was just listening and I was a teenager, but I was listening, but I just didn't respond like a lot of people did. And, and then he stopped me. He was giving an altar call for those that want to receive Jesus. And he made this statement, if you are there tonight and you don't feel God's presence, 
you're dying and you're going to hell. Now, how did that make me feel? It's like he came out, came back there with a big old ball bat and just hit me. I mean, it just broke my heart. And, and I didn't feel, no, I didn't feel God. And, and I went home in my bedroom. I was living at home at that time. And, and, and I, I fell across the bed and I began to cry and began to weep. I said, God, and, and it's funny how in that time, Scripture came in my heart. I said, God, did you not say that if I asked you to come into my heart, you would? Did you not say if I confess my sins, you're faithful just to forgive me? Did you not say that you'll never leave me nor forsake me? And I cried out for God. And, and, and so my, my Christianity was wishy-washy. Now sometimes you go to church, you don't feel, you don't feel good. Maybe you don't feel, maybe you don't feel God's presence. It's no sign that you're not saved. As a Christian, you're going to have ups and downs in your life. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. I remember one time several years ago, this minister was, uh, yes, this ministry was ministering. He had a big crowd there. Ah, he was just really giving a, a good word and, and, and give a prophecy and, and just continued to preach the word. He stopped. He said, let me tell you right now, when he talked about the just shall live by faith, he said, let me say this. If I went the way I feel right now, if I went the way, now here he is anointed, ministering the word of God and just, and just blessing us. And, and, and he said, if I went the way I feel right now, I would close the meeting, go home, get the boat, get my run reel, I would go fishing. Man, that, that surprised me. What is he saying? The judge should live by faith. This year, don't live by your feelings. Don't let the way you feel. Now, if, you, if you're living in sin, you ought to have some type of a conviction, feel bad about sin, sure. But if you're a child of God, live for God. Uh, the, best, the Bible says, draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Now, God's in you. But what, you, what he said, if, if you draw nigh to me, I draw nigh to you with my blessings the manifestations of my goodness in your life. So we got to wake up and, and take our place. The only way you can wake up and take your place is to know the Word of God. That's the purpose of, of the messages that I deliver to let you know that man shall not live by bread alone, Jesus says, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We must live by faith. The judge shall live by his faith. Let me close with this. I know without a doubt that I would not be here living today and healthy today if it was not the understanding of faith. Faith calls those things as be not the, the word. I love to teach on faith. Several years ago, I went home from the office. I'll share this before. Let me share it again. I went home. And I don't usually take naps in the day after Sunday. Some people go home Sundays. I preach. I go home. I'm wide awake. I don't go to sleep till nighttime. You know, wake up daytime, go to bed at nighttime. And I just, but that one particular day, I felt like I just needed to take a little nap, a little sit. That's not like me, but I, I just felt like I needed to do that. And I just... Laid on the bed. And when I did, when I did, I don't know whether I was in the body, out of the body. I don't know. All I know is it was like a dream, uh, uh, like a night vision. I don't know. But I, I was, as, quick as, as quick as I laid my head down, I'm standing in front of Jesus. I'm standing in front of Jesus. He's about 12, 15 feet in front of me. And, and, and I knew it was Jesus and had a white garment on. I saw the, the feet and, 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 and I ran up to him and I put my arms around his ankles and because of my love for him. And, and, and he, he said, that, he, he said, matter of fact, another thing I noticed is like when I've done that, it's like I was out of the body and I saw myself kneeling at his feet and, and loving on him. He said, stand up on your feet. And I stood up. He said, go back 
and teach my people faith. And I woke up. You said, well, he's making that up. Well, some people do make things up. That's truth. That's truth. And one of the most important things in your life outside of God and the Word of God is the Word of God is faith, love. Because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please God. So I want to encourage you, study about faith. Keep tuning in to these messages because I believe that that's one of my assignments to teach faith. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, I'm going to be anyway honest with you. I believe God has called many ministers to teach on faith. Not just certain people, not just Brother Hagin or all these men of God, me and other ministers. We are all called to teach on faith. But if you don't know about faith, you don't know anything about faith, how can you teach what you don't know if you haven't heard? So the message of faith needs to be gotten out so people, everyday people that go to the church can learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Well, I'm going to let you go until next service, but I want you to tune in to, to the next part, and we'll get into the nitty-gritty of uh, wake up and, and, and take your place. I want to remind you that this is your year for signs, wonders, and miracles. Don't be depressed anymore. Take your, rise up and take your place. Walk in your authority. We'll talk about that next time, that you do have this God-given authority. We love you. God bless you. And have a Holy Ghost tongue-talking day and a successful one. God bless you again. Praise God. We love you. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.